Hey everybody, welcome back to Age of Wonders 4. Here is our beautiful map. We are, of course, the Black Empire on the right, and a, a little blob of an outpost in the middle. And you can see there are some emerging contenders for the throne, yet I'm not convinced that, say, these guys over here necessarily present much of a threat to us. Uh, thinking back to what we did last time and having a quick glimpse in the underground at a foreign capital we're at war with, of course, last time we transformed our armies and our people into dragon people. Uh, and we also picked up some new units, some new units that we can actually train ourselves, no transformations needed. So we're bringing in new dragon fighters. And if we can pan back to, here they are, the top three armies in the world, maybe. Uh, obviously, we also did the uh, draconian transformation as well. This bad boy right here, the major race transformation inside of the new tier three tome. It's given us wings and spikes and these massive big horn things. And I think it's pretty fantastic. While we're here, also, we can upgrade a new hero skill for someone who actually turned out to be almost my favorite leader. Don't tell our Dragon Queen. I think in this case, there are plenty of reasonable options. I'm a big fan of summon animal for the extra unit. So I'm gonna bring that in. We also have an additional uh, standard point. And as usual, I think I'll probably lean into less upkeep. Do I really care about less upkeep when we're making 250? I don't think I do actually. No, I do not. Magic attacks gain 80% damage until the end of your next turn. Sure, let's do that. You can stack your power into this incredible staff that also summons extra minions, a zombie every turn for the first three turns. Not too shabby. Now, in terms of our game plan, where to from here, We've just captured this wander. We've just captured this outpost. This outpost is then going to capture this wander. It's captureception. Now that we've got that under our control, even more goodies, I think we should head down into the underground. So we'll send, obviously, uh, our absolute queen, Thelma, looking pretty, also looking to level up one more time so that she can get another one of her special abilities, uh, and the rest of our armies down to probably take advantage of the fact that we've just slain this guy, who should still be Astral Void? Or maybe, ooh, he's back. You know what? It doesn't especially scare me though. I think we'll push this capital and finish this war, securing ourselves potentially an extra city, albeit an underground one, kind of that dragon's den that I was talking about earlier. I also can't help but notice that we're just hoovering up a shite load uh, of Imperium. Inside of the development tree, uh, is there anything that is crucial to me right now? I mean, getting the extra population is nice. Extra 20 knowledge for province. Kind of a fun one-off. But at 350, fairly expensive. Uh, movement cost for our units in our own domain is reduced by two points. That could be useful moving forward for a victory condition. However, this one here, the Druidic Empire, does really appeal to me. They'll cut our food consumption essentially in half, or at least what we require to grow. I do note that we actually only have one city-state, and uh, why don't we just make them our own city? Yep, I don't think I care so much uh, about the Rally of Legions mechanic, and instead I'm just going to hoover up this entire <laughs> extra city, also placing us right on the border with Green Man and his 18 units. What kind of strength is he boasting? Honestly nothing in comparison to our dragons. However, none of these armies even have a hero, so he's probably packing heat somewhere else as well. It's something to be conscious of, but not necessarily be afraid of. Let's make sure that this place is producing enough knowledge so that it's worth our time, so we'll get something in there. We'll chuck a governor on board. By the way, Thalma governor, she's a genius. 25 knowledge. Uh, and then I guess we'll expand into, hmm, a forester, because this place doesn't even have one. <laughs> Also aggravating this person who we're now sandwiching in between us. Honestly, is it such a bad thing to be the filling in between two slices of Thalma bread? I don't think so. Uh, either way, this is our city now. And I think now we should probably move towards taking down old boy in the underground. Also a little bit of an annoyance is their ally, their ally city state that is Sol. We could probably sweep over there and destroy that fairly quickly, but I think we'll go for gold, because why not? Let's jump down and take a look. We can probably also afford to just run these dudes as far forward as they can go, because of course last time we took out, I hope, every single troop in their army. Now the AI isn't terrible at rebuilding, but of course 
they're ultimately limited to how many cities they have, how much resource they have, and by the looks, they've managed to pull together a mere four units, and one of them is the hero, so probably not the end of the world. Uh, we have 375 knowledge per turn, which is outstanding if I don't say so myself. We're going to move through this research cycle fairly quickly, I hope. Special province improvements, ground five gold isn't really going to do a lot for me, and I don't really need that breastplate. What could be useful uh, down the line would be to either get the expanded city cap again, in fact that's probably the best bet, or some basic utility, maybe, you know, a forced march, although I probably prefer something like advanced sensing. Uh, but for now, that's good enough for me. We've got our dudes down and, and ready to roll, and the capital city is still just plodding away. I should have got this channeling chamber earlier so that we had the casting points to become dragons faster. Uh, we're making enough money, at least, per turn that I can start to train some more significant units. So let's just quickly also pull together, I reckon, probably another army of six. We'll need them either to defend when we build our, maybe our magic victory totems, or to get rid of this. I mean, I do love this new UI. This is great. Made it very easy to see what was happening. Uh, I don't love this attack, though. <laughs> How dare you? I'm going to pull together an army of dragons and, and then you will know pain. Here's a quick way to get a free Autumn Fairy unit thanks to the event that popped up at the start of the turn. It is, sure, slightly in the wrong city, but we'll bring it down this way. We've got two turns to clear that. This army with just two dragons was producing like 330 or 340 strength. So I'm not really that afraid, to be honest. Uh, cue that up. We won't rush the production, but we might be able to rush the production of that last one next turn and then stomp out and just get rid of them in the nick of time. Two research cycles to go, and it's because we're such a research god, it's only taking us one turn, especially for those cheapies. Uh, oh, I underestimated you. Look at this. He's actually pulled together quite a few dudes. Combat strength on the hero army is comparable to Thelma's. What we might do in that case, because Thalma's missing a unit, is summon something in. We could go for the new Corrupt Soul, tier 4 summoning spell, or just another Nymph. I think the Nymph is probably better. Either way, it's going to take me two turns. Let's get the Nymph. Great. Uh, and then we'll move in, besiege that city. We've got a whole load of production <laughs> woes, or actually, more likely, we've got a whole load of production benefits because all of these cities are pumping stuff out incredibly fast there's not necessarily a huge number of things that i'll need to build until we get to tier four we'll want to put up our next uh our next nature beacon but outside of that i don't think the defenses are really worth our time so let's keep building up our wizard towers our wizard crypts inside of the capital uh but actually before i do that like a new let me refund that money <laughs> so that we can go down here Oh, you are very expensive to speed up. Next turn, it'll be much cheaper, though. All right, Druid, we need you and we need you now. These units, granted, somewhat expensive in terms of upkeep. Let's have a look. What are you? So you are 30 bucks and 3 Imperium. Luckily for us, we are just making an incredible amount of money, and it's not even from the Dragon Horde. It's actually relatively insignificant just to the city income, which I suppose is probably to be expected. When this unit kills another, its cooldowns are reset. This unit gets 10% extra experience. You're fairly basic, but I like you a lot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, we'll march over here. We don't have a hero, but to be frank, I don't think we need it. So let's chuck that in. We'll also chuck our free fairy in because why not? The more the merrier. And let's clear this out just in the nick of time. We're about 200 strength ahead. And we got absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Oh dear. I have to retry that. Oh, look at the dragons, though. Aren't they awesome? And they're just actually sort of fairly basic fighter units, at least considering uh, where we're up to in the tech tree. Go on. In the name of your Queen Thalma. All right, let's send in the little piggy uh, for a charge move. I think we should focus fire on the hero, to be completely honest. Oh my goodness. Dragon. Destroy. <laughs> that for me is, is instantly a better outcome than last time. Even if we still end up losing. I think that uh, I think that taking down the hero is incredibly significant. You know what, let's keep going. Another dragon strike. 
You betcha backside. In fact, we can do 32 damage to that one there. How did the AI ruin this? Oh, the archers did take down one of my dragons, even after I put the regeneration and extra defense, but it doesn't matter. Did you see that tail whip? My god. Imagine the power of Thalma's tail whip if she had a tail like that. Okay, well, I, I think, uh, I do think that the auto resolve generally does a good job, but in this case, manual intervention was clearly the right path to take. A 100% win rate. Well done. <laughs> Back down here, it actually looks like it's shaping up to be a reasonable fight. Not one that I'm afraid of, but a reasonable fight nonetheless. Let's work on another nymph. We have one more slot in this army, and then let's start besieging this place. Let me lift that siege. Jump into the tree. Grab this for 175, one extra siege slot. We might as well. Seems like a waste not to. We might be able to speed up the siege a little bit. Ooh, well, without any money though, Chief, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Thankfully, we have some cash stored probably in these cities. Is anyone producing anything? Yes, you are. We don't need a monolith right now. We have nearly 1,200 science uh, mana. <laughs> Get your game right, Jumbo. We have nearly 1,200 mana and we're making 200 a turn. So uh, I don't think that's a problem. Oh, and we have someone in our prison. Convert, grant freedom, execute. Sorry, I just need the money. <laughs> Thanks for the 160 bucks. And of course, also the gear is helpful for us to make a little bit of extra mana. Uh, we also have this new dragon attack. Units defending the city tank 26 fire damage and have a nine in 10 chance of being burnt. Fires are randomly added. And of course, we're immune to fire as dragon people. so. This is a win, win, win for us and absolute destruction for them. Uh, then we'll take probably an undermining of the walls and let's break the battlements too. Three of those, siege in four. Make sure that everyone is in the siege range, which they are not. Now they ought to be. And we should be able to see, yeah, 1400 versus 2400. Okay, four turns to wait and then we'll be able to break this place. Before that though, it's time to pick up a new tome. Now of course we could go back and grab a tier 3 from everywhere. Here's a, the Whiteborn when we were maybe thinking about doing the Undead Dragons, but you voted overwhelmingly for the actual Draconian transformation and I completely agree. Uh, we'll be taking probably Nature's Wrath, I think, specifically for this, Summon Horned God. So this is the, the sort of mythical, the very powerful, the mythic unit at our level. Crucially, of course, this will use our mana instead of our gold. Now, gold isn't necessarily a problem, but we have a lot of mana too. So I'm going to take this one, grab that. One for that unit, but secondly, of course, because we are clearly a nature dragon <laughs> synergy build going on here. I mean, we have 17 nature affinity and almost none of the rest, which is fine by me because it seems to be working out pretty well. The other factor, of course, is that we'll need to get our second doohickey online. So currently we have Seed of Nature here. We want to obviously keep them relatively close together. So if we have a look at Helheim and jump here, let's get the Root of Nature and let's place it down right next door. Nice. Okay, so four turns, we'll grab that. It'll also, of course, boost our nature research. So things are going to really start to snowball now inside of these tomes in particular. And with our knowledge reaching around 400, I'm pretty optimistic we'll be able to smash through these tomes fairly quickly. We've got some pretty powerful picks here too. We have Astral Inspiration, which could help us snowball even further through the tree, but we also have Druidic Empire, so we can consume a lot less food. However, for the time being, there is one crucial one that I need, and it's to step into this one again, this repeatable general right, expanded governance, to increase our city cap once more, now up to five. Why? Well, because it's... Time to destroy, that's why. 2600 versus 1900, and with three siege equipment on my side, I think this is gonna be a fairly safe, although I did say this last time, granted, a fairly safe auto combat. Three, two, one, boom. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Good. And all the leaders level up, except for poor old Thelma. <laughs> 
Rip. And also rip to this guy. Uh, shall we get the minus 10 and steal a whole load of food? Or take the Imperium and lose a bit of money in the process? You know, actually, that's that could be better for me. Just because, as we were talking about earlier, we've got some powerful things to unlock. I'm going to jump right to the end of the nature branch to grab that one to start with. So with this city conquered in the name of the Dragon Overlords, we're basically done down here. There's not really much else. It's actually a quite a nice sort of relatively private city. Well built, lots of interesting tiles, including this one where these poor horses are living literally underground on some pile of goop or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, we're going to leave here and get back up to the overworld because it's going to become... It's going to become pretty intense here, as it looks like we're moving fairly aggressively toward the magic victory. Uh, if I jump up here and take a look at, can he find, can he find it, can he, there it is, okay. Uh, if we, I just want to have a look at the expansion one as well. Occupy Province is 55, even with the new city, it's a little ways off. I think magic victory is the way to go here, a magical dragon victory. What kind of outpost settle is this? How dare you? She's trying to take that tournament hill, isn't she? Ah, fair enough, I suppose. Something finders keepers something something. I'm not super thrilled about that though at the same time. Let's get back up into the overworld. Uh, also, research just smashing through it. One research cycle to go until we can get another tome. I'm going to spend my mana because we've got heaps to try and find the cheapest things possible because I think at this point the build itself is relatively complete. There might only be one or two things inside of each tome that I really desperately want. So we'll continue to build up our knowledge just so we can push through it as fast as possible. But a lot of the other buildings mightn't be necessary. I just completely forget we even have this city. A city in the west. Whew, what a place to be. Uh, we've also got a shite load of gear and upgrades and of course the crucial hero skill as well. So let's get this guy an extra animal for the upcoming fight. Uh, you are a sword wielder, so I'll give you a, a basic fighting improvement. And anything you want to chuck in here. Anything at all. Ring of opportunity. 30% extra damage. Nah, nah, I think this is good. We've got a little bit of gear in the stash, now making us around 70, 68 gold, and 68 mana per turn. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our dragon overlords for that surprise. Speaking of which, come on Thelma, I know you've got tiny leagues, but let's pick up the pace a little bit, huh? We gotta get out of here. We could lean into something like this actually, Cycle of Seasons, one that I haven't really played around with much, but depending on the season, we get a different benefit, as you can see, like there's enemies sustaining five frost damage, or friendly units healing five temporary hit points. We might as well cast this on the cities, because I believe it affects the whole domain. One, two, and three, so that we can get little extra benefits to help us defend. Obviously we're also going to take the second uh, Tome of Magic inside of the Nature Affinity, the Tome of Paradise in this case, not necessarily for anything that it unlocks just like last time, but actually so that we can start to move through. Guy's Chosen, a major race transformation that of course we can't take because hey, we got ours ages ago. Let's cycle, try and find the cheapest possible things. Sustain this city as well with our magical sort of seasonal spell. So now we have the Root of Nature and the Seed of Nature under control. It'll be Gore Pit, I'd say, that'll build our last district. Can't get it quite up there, but we can get it pretty close. My strategy here is not, of course, to just completely overlook what we're researching. Something like Projectiles of Decay is another thing that could be very useful for us. But a lot of support units. This will give us a bit more Blight damage, already something we're pretty good at and have a 90% chance of inflicting decaying as well. So they're picking up things like this again, one turn each, so fast. My God, we are fast. Yes, let's capture that territory from that person. Am I aggravating everyone in the world? I am, including this pink player to our left, who seems to be rallying some troops around their land, though I don't consider them to be too much of a threat yet. Uh, meanwhile, the ragtag group are gonna make their way to the north, they're very tired. They've done a lot of fighting. They barely even saw daylight for, for, for many days there as they were underground. But now they've surfaced. And obviously what I'm going to try and do is pull together around four armies of six. I actually already have that. It's probably enough to defend. And we also have the ability, of course, 
to start to summon more things in, including our very powerful new Horned God, a tier 8 summoning spell. 32 damage Reclaiming Bolt and 30 damage Wild Eruption, as well as having the Animate Flora ability. It does cost, as you can see down the bottom there, 60 mana upkeep. Woo -wee! Uh, and 7 Imperium. I can afford at least both of those once. Twice, potentially as well. We may not need a lot more mana, uh, so we'll queue that up. That will give us 3 in that army, and then 6, 6, 6, 6. And I think that'll be plenty. We should be able to position them kind of in and around this forest, and then they'll be able to reach up to defend Gorpet, but largely kind of mosey about down here to defend these two for the most part. Let's check in on our, okay, one more to go. Fortress of Vines? Eh, sure. You're cheap. I like it. Okay. Welcome to turn 74. Now we get to pick up what will be potentially, or at least our last needed tome, Tome of the Goddess of Nature. Uh, inside of it, the Mass Rejuvenation Healing spell is potentially quite useful for us. Yeah, absolutely. And the rest, I mean, not terrible, right? Extra uh, critical hit chance, more blight damage on some of our units. I'm not so keen on Forest Awakens, but it's there. And we could get extra vision. Maybe we'll be able to see some enemies coming for us. I suspect everyone will declare war with us. You can see we've also lost our agreement with old Hamburg <laughs> Hamburger. Old Ham Binger. Is that worse or better? I'm not sure. Either way, uh, we've lost that with him. So everyone's kind of mad with us now, and perhaps rightly so, because we're shaping up for victory. Now that we've got the final tome, of course, we'll be able to jump into the third city and build this, the heart of nature. Uh, plop it down. Yeah? Yeah. It's a little far away. It's not really, actually. I'm worrying about nothing. So that's going to take 10 turns to complete, but I've been saving up my gold for a while. So actually, next turn, and in fact, let's jump through and ignore, sorry to all of those notifications on the right. The people in these cities are crying out, Sir, please, we need a, we need a bath, or whatever they're crying out for. No, you don't. You need a heart of nature. And here's 1,256 gold to insta-complete it. The AI, I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, we'll summon in this massive dude. Let's have a look at him actually on the map. Ah, uh, yeah, those big guys. You're huge. And I like the little bird on the top of his head too. That's a great touch. Uh, let's merge you in with those guys. You're only an army of three, but you're kind of back up anyway because you're nearly as strong as some full armies. Uh, now that we've got that out of the way, of course, we can cast this. The Age of Nature spell doesn't cost us any casting points nor mana. It does have a 20 mana upkeep, however, but that's it. It doesn't really matter where we click. We're going to cast it on Thelma herself. And just like that, <laughs> war, 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 war. Everybody's declared it because we're a threat to them and because of our improvements. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Frog. And thank you, Hamburger. Much appreciated. And now, Thelma has let out a giant green gas cloud across the map. Of course, that's the Nature Affinity spell uh, in practice. And now all we have to do is defend one, two, three points of interest for 15 turns. Every single person has declared war on me, which... Uh, to be honest, I would expect that. Like, I'm kind of glad that's the way the AI behaves. Let's get our final sustained city spell down so that all three of these regions are at least a little bit protected by that. And we probably want to just scoot maybe half the dudes up a little bit and then keep these other ones, including Queen Thelma, down this way. Now we have a reasonable cluster. It should be strong enough to fight off the sort of uh, automatic attempts, you know, the the kind of barbarian units, for lack of a better word, the AI will spawn against us. In my experience, they tend to spawn two armies of six, and neither army tends to be stronger than a thousand. So I'm thinking we're probably going to come up against maybe about 1800 combat strength. And then the only other question is, what are all these raging banners over here going to do? At the moment, they're still fighting. Oh, she's... Oh, no! They're raiding Scragheim! <laughs> what do we do? Release it as a vessel! <laughs> Ultimately, of course, Scragheim doesn't matter too much. I mean, we have a hero stuck here. You brave, brave soul. 
you're going to go down with that ship. It's Gregheim potentially actually acting as a nice distraction from what's going on over here, aka me winning the game with a 14 turn timer ticking down. We should probably keep an eye out. No, actually, the south is safe. We have the south. We have it underground. We have it above ground. We're totally fine. Uh, shall we pump some food in? No. No. Let's give the city some draft. And then chuck down a free... A th how many? <laughs> okay. Almost three of these guys. And they are going to head down to this army. And we've just got an army of tree people led by a horned god and flanked by druids of the cycle. They've got 1,080 strength. So I think that puts us in a pretty good place. Let's see. Oh my god. Look at the AI go. Scragheim. It burns. Every single tile. And the city itself has been put under siege. As my two former friends, actually no, it's not even, is it? It's you. It's you. <laughs> Either way, uh, as two AI opponents seek to just absolutely burn down this place, I've never seen such a level of pillaging before. Maybe if I'd had an army here, they might have gone for me first, but I've got to say, this is impressive. This is really impressive. Also this turn, three out of 15, we have our first fighters to contend with. I slightly underestimated this army's strength, that's for sure, being led by uh, a Reaper mythical unit, but their assistants are kind of weaker. They still come out below 2,000. Let's bring the army of trees, stomp them down that way. Of course, Thalma will take the lead because we're going to need her in these fights. What does that look like? Looks good. Looks good. And of course, we've got the Age of Nature. Every Oh, I didn't actually know that description was there. Every two turns, a tier 2-3 to three nature unit is summoned on your side. Originates from Thalma. Thanks, Thalma. Not quite sure about that. Uh, and then we have the Cycle of Seasons, which at the moment is dealing 5 frost damage. Okay. Auto-resolve, auto-success? Question mark? Oh, yeah. Big success. <laughs> Look at that guy fall over. Big success. And a few souls and some cash money to boot. Uh, now that they're in friendly territory, they'll heal relatively quickly. Other rulers forged an alliance. Wow. Did they what? Did they what? Actually, let's have a look. Huh. Three-way alliance. They actually did it. They all declared war on me, and they formed a Giga alliance. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. I'd, I'd much rather that than it be just some AI sitting on its hands. The question is, is this, and let's be real, this is absolutely chaotic. Is this chaos about to spread? Armies of reasonable strength split up into lots of different bits. Will this tide of destruction flow over into the capital or not? If it does, it might be a bit more of a difficult fight. If not, I think we should be able to handle the random AI dudes, uh, including these spiders who should have perished a long time ago. Hey, can we just quickly tidy up these spiders? Thanks, team. <laughs> nice. A magic missile wand as well. Brilliant. Haha. <laughs> so... By releasing Scragheim, I prevented the siege by the looks. It looks like it's cancelled it. They might need to re-trigger it or, or do it again. We did unfortunately uh, kick out this hero who's now going to make a run for it across this uh, just destroyed, ruined, pillaged land. As I see also another AI player entering the ring, none other than Parsley the Bear. <laughs> hey, at least he's riding a little dragon. I shouldn't laugh at Parsley too much because his name's Parsley the Bear. <laughs> you do you, Parsley. On turn 81, we're at turn 6 out of 15. I'm still yet to see the AI actually cross over into these main cities. An interesting case study. Uh, but we do have some more of these guys. Looks like they're roughly presenting the same way they did last time. About 1,200 in one army, about 700 in another. Thankfully, of course, we're ready and in position. Thalma's not going to be here for this fight, but uh, we've still got 3,000 combat strength. So I think that should be fine. Right? <laughs> Why do I always get slightly nervous? I don't think there was any need to be nervous for that one. I suppose if you're burnt once, you'll forever remain just slightly skeptical. <laughs> Maybe. I should give trust to Age of Wonders 4 system, though. It's by and large... 
pretty good at what it does. A hero leveled up, of course it wasn't Thalma. It, it's never Thalma. But uh, nonetheless, a little bit of extra strength potentially for these last few fights. Melee and physical ranged attacks gain 10%, not quite what I'm after. Let's just grab fighting two. Smash all the power you've got into this axe. We've got a lot of primary weapons, of course, and all of them are presenting us with at least a little bit of cash and mana, thanks to our perks, so I'm happy for them to just basically just sit there idle. I forgot to move you. Oh dear. And this guy, Parsley the Bear, who I was relentlessly mocking, has chased you down. Well, you know what? We can't all be winners. I'm sorry, friend. Thank you for your efforts. You served the Empire well, and arguably gave your life. Or at least what we'll say, right, in our propaganda version of the history books, we'll say that that hero gave their life defending Scragheim, which stands tall as an independent bastion of hope inside of the Dragon Empire. Yeah, I think that's a good line. Uh, would we like to add you to our recruitment pool? I don't need help from other god here at the moment. Can't you see I'm a little busy? Just, just a fraction. Anyway. Holy moly. We are at turn 9 out of 15. And I see a big old army standing on the side of this mountain. Lots of dudes. Uh, some reasonable units too. The iron golems I'm a fan of. Though of course they're not quite up to the mythical level. They have seemingly left Scragheim alone completely. Which I think is a pretty interesting example in of itself. About maybe a way to cheese that or maybe that's actually just them thinking intelligently that the city doesn't matter however that doesn't really stand because they were burning it down to begin with instead of flooding over this way uh, speaking of flooding over this way we've been flooded again but much like last time it's the same routine and this time i'm pounding in with such confidence and relentlessness because it's basically just the same fight again and again uh, we're a little bit weaker though looks like we didn't quite have enough time to heal we did unfortunately use a lose a poor young frost dragon but outside of that uh, not the end of the world let's summon in a horned god in replace of that dragon we've literally got the tree people fighting for us now this is awesome trees and dragons what more could you need everybody age of wonders for dragon dawn amazing <laughs> i'm also pleased to report while we only have four turns left to defend Thelma has leveled up and got another one of her signature skills. Uh, which, what would you like? What would be a good thing to go with a dragon? Frostfire detonation. Deals damage to a target. 30% to all units in a 2 hex radius. That's quite destructive. Uh, the classic summon animal. Holy retribution. No, no, no. And draining blade. I mean, not terrible. I think we'll go for Frostfire Detonation in this case. It feels like the most on brand. And then, of course, inside of the specific Dragon Lord traits, I'm going to buff Tail Bash because Tail Bash has been with us since, since day one. Boom. Tail Swipe, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So it's, so it's added that effect into Tail Swipe, now dealing a lot of damage, potentially stunning enemies and displacing them at the same time. Ah. Oh. What a legendary tale. We're at 12 out of 15 for defending our affinity provinces now. And little Miss Thelma has got herself something to fight, which is great. She loves stomping enemies. 3072 combat strength again. Simply more than enough to deal with this threat. Speaking of these threats, I notice this. Wow. The strength of the armies individually isn't insane, but it's competitive enough that if they brought three of the sort of strongest groupings together, they could get me. You'll also notice that they're besieging Scragheim. The independent bastion will fall. But you know what? If it falls in place of me, that's totally fine. Just don't tell them I said that. So I think what we'll do is end that turn because we've slain these enemies. There's literally nothing going on in the underground except for the city that I ended up vassalizing instead of taking over. Just didn't really, didn't really see the need for us to control that. Well, we now sit on 14 out of 15. Be fair to say that the AI will successfully take one city off me in defense, 
but of course it wasn't a city that actually had any of the three items. Uh, there are some troop movements now up to the north. Okay. I like that. I'm not sure if that mine is necessarily the target that they should be gunning down, but they have entered, technically, the domain of the capital city. So I guess uh, points for trying. Unlike these guys who decided, eh, we're, um, we're just going to sit here and defend Tridale. Just in case that magical essence takes us down. And it did take them down because there we have it, everybody. Sweet, sweet victory. Inside of Age of Wonders for Dragon Dawn, there is, of course, Queen Thalma flanked by her kind of grisly <laughs> nature-based army, but also the lizard people in the background who've got those dragon wings on their side. Uh, a turn 90 victory is pretty dang good. Zooming out a little bit to have a look at the world. I'm curious what happened over this side. So purple came in, white came in, spread. They didn't, oh, okay, and then took them and spread and spread right the way up. Look at that. Interesting. I'm not sure why my city just, oh, I guess because I vassalized it. So it disappeared off the main map, making it look as though it was gone, but it wasn't. So actually, that Purple Empire, uh, quite impressive. I wonder how they were doing militarily. They were ahead. They were ahead. Just them alone. Research, they were not. And economy, they were, yeah. So they were actually shaping up to be a, a fairly impressive ally, uh, or enemy, I should say. They just didn't make it fast enough. We were able to outpace them with our research, and ultimately, I think we could probably agree at the end there, despite their initial wave being pretty chaotic, their initial assault of that city, pillaging every tile, burning everything down and besieging it, very impressive. But ultimately, just not quite enough to get us there. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. It wasn't quite enough to get them there, but we achieved a turn 90 victory. This has been Age of Wonders for Dragon Dawn Early Access. Thank you to Paradox, not for sponsoring. This is not a sponsored series. Uh, but for giving me early access to the press preview build, uh, the full build, I believe, releases around the 20th of June. So it's really not that long to wait now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.